Hey guys, Grayson here with Phoenix LiDAR, and uh, today I will be discussing a new version of the flight planning tool. Uh, you're familiar with the LiDAR version. Uh, recently we have now added photogrammetry. So uh, you can see right up here in the upper left hand corner we have the photogrammetry and LiDAR options. So you have the option of um, selecting both payloads or of course one or the other. Um, so uh, many of you have LiDAR as well as photogrammetry and we get the question all the time what overlap um, you know what should my flight line spacing be what should be the the trigger distance intervals uh, etc and uh, um, so that's why we developed this latest version with both payload options um, so just like the previous version of the flight planner uh, to go over the um, how to navigate you use your center mouse wheel button and hold that down to orbit so you hold down your center mouse wheel to orbit or you scroll in by your using your center mouse wheel to zoom in zoom out uh, the left click allows you to pan and the right click allows you to zoom in and, and zoom out as well um, so that's with the the mouse uh, now to to select your flight plan region, you want to look down, um, so not from the side, but straight down on the project. And you want to select, um, you know, right about where you want your region to be. Or you can click this button up here that uh, says upload the KMZ. And when you upload the KMZ, it will go to your location. If you don't have a KMZ and you want to search for your location, just type in the address up here in the search bar. It'll take you to that that address. So uh, let's start by selecting our region of interest here. So we've set up our four corners. Those are our anchor points. And if we want to add more geometry, you just select those points um, to create uh, to extend your 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 flight plan um, so that's the grayed out points are selection points and uh, the white points are anchors if you want to delete the white points just right click hover your mouse over that white white point right click it and that will delete the point um, so this shows you our region as well as the 3d region that we would like to cover so up at the top left uh, you're going to see your latitude longitude um, your KMZ upload, your KMZ download. This deletes all, so this erases everything. And this downloads just your trajectory. And uh, as mentioned before, we will have a follow-up webinar of downloading the trajectory and importing to, to uh, Leachay. And uh, the, the reason that we like that the Leachay um, Waypoint app is that it also factors in not only X and Y, but the Z so you can import XYZ flight plan into Leachay and and plan um, uh, terrain following as well so all right moving on to photogrammetry and LiDAR the one thing to uh, make sure uh, to get the point across on this is uh, when it was LiDAR only you had the option of selecting your line spacing here. So your flight line spacing, 60, 70 meters, that was the option with LiDAR only. With photogrammetry, your flight line spacing is derived based on your lateral photo overlap. So what that means, if you can see this icon here, I might be able to zoom in. By the way, if you want to increase the, the menu, just hold down Control and, and with your mouse wheel, um, scroll up or down you can make the the menu smaller or bigger by holding down control and then scrolling with your mouse wheel so with a loader lateral overlap you'll see two helicopters here in this yellow area is the overlap of the imagery um, that you're taking so um, typically uh, with photogrammetry you're in the 60 to 70 um, percent range lateral overlap and about 70 five percent uh, forward overlap um, and these numbers are what's going to derive your flight line spacing when you have photogrammetry selected um, so uh, as as with the last tutorial video we still have fixed altitude or terrain following 
um, depending on what type of aircraft that you've got. Uh, you'll want to select your speed. If it's uh, multi-rotor, in this case, we'll do terrain following. And you see this option pop up. This is the line segment spacing. So if you have an autopilot that has a limitation in the number of waypoints, what this means is that um, in each individual flight line that you create, uh, the waypoints will be spaced 50 meters apart. If I left it at zero, you would have infinity waypoints, which most flight controllers cannot handle. So this means in each linear flight line, um, it's separating each uh, waypoint by, by 50 meters, or all the way up to, to 100, uh, depending on how big your project is. Uh, typically, we're in the you know about 70 meter range with uh, most of the DJI products. Um, so moving down to um, field of view, sure with LiDAR, um, your field of view really depends on, on the application. For vegetation, you're, you'll be mostly in the 60 degree field of view. If you're down below and in, into the plains, you can increase your field of view all the way up to 110 degrees. Um, so, but in this example, we are covering uh, a highly vegetated area up in the in the mountains. Also new to this version, you'll see t um, not only time, but we now have distance traveled, uh, of course our flight line spacing, and then the area that we're mapping. This is just a, about a third of a square kilometer is, um, is this area. Okay, um, now select your camera. We have a bunch of cameras to select from. Uh, well, in this case, we'll select the A7R2, and let's make it a 21 uh, millimeter lens. And, okay, so we'll select our, our LiDAR sensor, and uh, let's call it an LR, 121 lines per second. Okay, so double check your parameters, uh, make sure you have everything right, and let's click calculate flight plan. Now um, for train following mode this flight plan is not recommended uh, simply because it, it, when, as the copter is is following the train and going up this slope it's constantly going to be pitching um, and with with LiDAR that's that's not a very good thing. Um, when you design your your flight plan you want to go uh, really uh, we can see the slope of this hill, and we want to go uh, to some parallel to, to some perpendicular. Let's just say we want to go perpendicular to the path of the slope of, of this hill. So what we're going to do is change our flight direction, and let's uh, move more up above it so you have a better picture. So we're moving our flight direction so we're more perpendicular to that and yeah so that gives you a, a better idea so now uh, with this flight pattern we're not nearly pitching as much as we go up the the hill to uh, to maintain uh, its uh, uh, altitude adjustment and as as well as speed so this is uh, we're not working in, against gravity here we're um, we're maintaining more of a, a nice steady straight line which is what you want with with lidar. All right, so we have our our course. Uh, and let's just adjust some of these flight lines. Um, and okay, that looks about good. So we've got our flight line spacing according to. 70% uh, lateral overlap, which tells us we're at about 51, um, at an AGL of 100, we're 51 meter flight line spacing. Um, so now we want to go ahead and calculate our image centers. So these blue dots that just appeared are now the image locations um, for your flight plan. And down below, um, as we click these uh, um, as you know these menu buttons here you're going to see these uh, um, outputs populate 
and uh, so we've got our image centers. So this next one, project image locations, what this means is is that it's it's going to provide you a, a gradient showing the number of camera image overlaps for that location. So in the center you might have um, a yellow, which indicates nine images uh, overlap that that location, and on the outskirts you might uh, have red or, or blue. So uh, it right now it's going through every image overlapping them and uh, we'll display it in, as a gradient on the map. So it may take a, a little bit, um, usually a, a, around a maximum about around 30 seconds or so. It depends really on how many images that, that we're calculating. Okay, so as you can see here we've got the uh, overlap uh, the number of overlapping pictures. So blue, we have greater than the nine overlapping pictures for these locations, and we have uh, on the red, you know, uh, one image overlapping. So of course, you want your region to have have good overlap in in photos. Uh, next weekend, so this is our overlap over at the top right is is our key where you can turn on and off layer so that's the image center that's the uh, photo location so now let's project our GSD um, so that's our ground sample distance and and you'll again also have a chart that explains um, centimeters uh, what to expect as far as GSD so in this range with the a7r2 we're right at about three centimeter GSD for the project um, and that's uh, because we are uh, Pretty much at a constant altitude uh, due to terrain following on this project. Okay, so that is the GSD. So we've got our our photo locations GSD, and let's do lidar swath. So this is going to project the lidar swath footprint, and you can see um, the uh, the overlap there. So uh, down below. You could see uh, because of photogrammetry, we have a very good um, overlap. We have an average with that uh, field of view with LIDAR at 85 degrees. We have an average of 90.5%, minimum 67, max 105% overlap. So that's really good LIDAR overlap with the, the VUX LR at that, uh, at that height. Um, and so that's our LiDAR swath. So let's now run uh, LiDAR point density for the region that we're mapping. And uh, uh, of course, because of that high overlap, we have uh, really good point density um, in these overlap areas of 664 points per square meter, which is quite high. Um, uh, most likely you'll have to downsample that data, but sure, with those numbers, you'll have excellent vegetation penetration and great coverage on structures and 3D structures. So um, that's our the LiDAR swath. Uh, there's also the uh, the MTA zone and this is uh, really of particular interest for when you're doing a fixed height. So when you're mapping on fixed wing aircraft you want to make sure that the transitionary periods especially for any regal sensor um, is not an area of, of interest. Um, so uh, you want to make sure that uh, um, that the area of, of interest is not right in one of those transitionary periods or you might want to adjust your, your, your altitude, your AGL. So that is the MTA zone. We've got our, our point density MTA zone, our LiDAR swath overlap, our image centers, our um, photo overlap, and our GSD all here as well as your flight line, your region, um, and if you have uploaded the CAMZ that's how you would hide the the CAMZ as well. So we've generated our our, our map, our anticipated um, area covered. Now there's uh, of course uh, a, a couple of other metrics down here to met worth mentioning. The number of images taken with the A7R is right around 143 images. Um, the flight's going to be, it's going to take about 11 minutes um, with uh, 
uh, traveling at 8 meters per second, uh, flight line spacing 51, uh, travel distance is 5.3 kilometers. And uh, the other thing worth mentioning is, is we've got our average GSD of 2.5 centimeters, min and max GSD. Um, yeah, you've got your, your average min and max forward and lateral overlap. And for uh, some systems uh, where you have to trigger um, by interval, this gives you a recommended uh, time triggering interval and a recommended distance triggering triggering interval to hit the uh, the estimated overlap um, forward overlap that uh, we calculated here so what's nice about this this latest version is now you can um, download just the trajectory or the trajectory as well as uh, everything else so uh, we're going to download um, the the entire KMZ and let's uh, open it up in and Google Earth Pro so I'm going to close that and we're going to focus just on this polygon we just created so what's nice about the um, this latest version is is that not only do you get the the keys but it also provides you a wonderful report. And this is a summary of, of all those parameters that you just entered into the Phoenix Flight Flight Planner. So we use both photogrammetry, LIDAR, we select a train following flight mode. Um, all of the flight plan parameters, your camera sensor parameters, the LIDAR sensor pr parameters, and then it's got your, your output. So your camera output um, the recommended trigger by distance. So you can log all of this as you plan your, your flight. So digging a little bit deeper, um, we can see our image centers. So that's what those yellow pins are. Those are your image locations. And on the left here, you've got it all organized. So you've got your the, the region, you've got your flight plan, of course, your photo centers, um, the photo projection and you can see the key up here in the the top right the ground sample distance let me just highlight hide the others so here's our our gsd our lidar swath our point density so that's the the 1 to 664 points per square meter so you can see the areas exact exactly the areas you're going to have high overlap your MTA zones, and of course, last but not least, is the report. And uh, um, so it's a really nifty way of, of uh, planning, and, and now you have that report that you now have logged. It tells you exactly the parameters that, that you input, as well as the recommended settings, um, uh, trigger by uh, time, trigger by distance. Um, so. That's the, the latest of the Phoenix Flight Planner. We hope you uh, enjoy it, and we welcome all your feedback on how to improve. And uh, um, as mentioned last time, we will follow up uh, with this, uh, with potentially another webinar on uh, using, exporting this flight trajectory into Lychee and, and uh, terrain following. So um, thanks again, and uh, we hope you enjoy. Please send us your feedback.